This is a case study of a year two class. Uh, the class teacher and I had identified that the children were relatively weak with their investigation skills. An important first step was to make sure the children had some really clear visual models to look at when they were introduced to the investigation. And for Mrs Multiple's cakes, uh, we had an array of cakes pictured on the whiteboard, um, a two by six array of cakes. And the children were um, asked to engage with those images uh, through my questioning uh, and through making observations of simply what they could see on the board. Uh, and that process of talking to each other at the very beginning of the uh, investigation um, is, is really important. It gets them using the words that they're going to need throughout the rest of the investigation. Once they'd taken a look at those images, um, they went off to their tables to, to begin to explore the numbers and the patterns involved in those investigations and began what's probably the next most important part of the investigation to record some of their ideas in any way they, that they liked. Uh, they weren't given specific models for recording. Once the children have begun to do lots of recording, uh, the next important step is to begin to think about organising that information in some way. Uh, when children begin to organise data and information, uh, that's when they're going to spot patterns and trends in the information. Uh, and I'm always telling children that uh, good pattern spotters make good mathematicians. So for example, when we were using Mrs Multiple's Cakes uh, investigation, um, I observed children beginning to work systematically. Uh, they would take a certain number of cakes, they were using counters on their tabletops to represent cakes, uh, and taking uh, 15 counters, for example, and trying all of the possible arrays, um, one row of 15, then trying to fit them into two rows, trying to fit them into three rows. Uh, sometimes it worked, and sometimes it didn't. Um, and as a, as a byproduct there, they were beginning to visualise what it meant to have remainders. The next step of the investigation was to try to explain some of those patterns that they began to discover. Explaining, I often tell children I'm working with, is the most important part of an investigation. This is a phase of the investigation where you want children to begin to think more generally, to move from the specific ideas that they've had uh, and, and pulling trends out of those ideas to make more of a generalisation. So, investigative learning uh, is a journey. It's not a quest for a single right answer. Um, children are going to meet dead ends, uh, and that's okay. Uh, it's going to help them to develop their resilience. Um, they're going to get stuck, uh, and that's okay as well. They're going to find strategies and work with you to find strategies uh, to, to work around being stuck. They're going to develop uh, a better mindset towards finding maths effortful. Investigation is often going to take you in unexpected directions, which can be really exciting. And probably most importantly, after every mathematical journey, uh, the children are going to be just a little bit better at thinking mathematically.